Welcome to Talk Time, where this week we are taking a look at the Royal Enfield Himalayan. So the main thing to say about this Royal Enfield Himalayan is that it is cheap. In fact, it's very cheap. It's £4,699 cheap, which uh, pitches it directly against things like the KTM 390 Adventure. I'd say that's a superior bike in every respect. Uh, V-Strom 250, uh, Kawasaki Versus, and of course, the BMW G310 GS. How does it fare? Let's find out in terms of spec. The Himalayan is uh, running conventional 41 mil front forks with a massive 200 mil of travel. We're on to an adventure style 21 inch uh, front spoked wheel and it's running 90 by 90 21 Pirelli MT60s. There is brakes, where are the brakes? We need some brakes, there's got to be some brakes. The brakes are here on this side. It's a, it's a two pot, one single two pot by Bray caliper and it's gripping a 300 mil disc at the front. We've got a big adventure style double beak at the front here, a conventional headlight with a bulb up and over this screen with these rather snazzy looking Royal Enfield instruments to a steel 15 litre fuel tank. This bike is reputedly good for 50 miles per gallon. It's all super cheap and cheerful. So around here, we have a frame, we have a frame somewhere, and I'm gonna to have to come round to find it. This is a relatively old fashioned reinforced steel split cradle frame. Uh, it's a duplex item, which has been made, I believe, by Harrison Performance specifically for Himalayan. Powering this uh, budget adventure bike is a 410 cc air-cooled single engine, which is putting out a mighty 24 and a half horsepower, which makes me think this is going to struggle somewhat on a fast UK road. We have rudimentary uh, pressed steel box section controls. We do have a proper adventure foot peg here if you unbolt the rubber on top. And that theme is continued round to this uh, single shock absorber here with a fairly huge 180 millimeters of travel and a linkage at the bottom. And continuing that theme is a simple box section steel swing arm, which is supporting a 17 inch uh, rear wheel, which is a 120, a 120, 90, 17, again, MT60 rear dual sport tire. We've got a single disc on this side, 280 millimeter, and again, a branded Bybre single piston caliper. So this bike is dripping with character, all of this rugged, adventure style steel racking. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's about robustness or it's giving off a feeling of robustness. We've got these engine bars here at the front, keep the whole thing protected if it does fall over. It's a very accessible 800 millimeter seat height. It's an EU4 bike, it's ABS. And unusually what we have here, even though it's fuel injected, you won't have seen one of these for a while. We have a choke lever. How splendid. There is a kind of curious, rugged appeal to the simplicity of this bike. Um, you turn the key, you can hear the fuel pump whine, the instruments are quite interesting, engaging, it kind of pulls you in, but I'm honestly not expecting very much from this bike at all. The only way to find out if it's up to, if it's up to the job is to, to get it out and uh, give it a run. It's wild, it's windy, and we are having ourselves a budget adventure. Yay! The Royal Enfield Himalayan. Easy to criticize. Absolutely straightforward to criticize. So I won't do that, or at least I won't start with that. There we go. Every adventure in Scotland, without question, deserve sheep and we have as many as many as we could hope for look at them go this motorcycle kind of puts me in mind of sheep it can go where they can go up in the hills 
I feel like I'm part of this. <laughs> they are so well trained. This could go up there, if they'd let me. Off she goes. You've got to work it hard because there is 26 and a half horsepower. And uh, that's not a lot in the real world. Straight lines are not where this bike excels. What a day. What about the bike then? I've sort of lost track of the bike because being out and about in these parts of Scotland that people travel many miles just to come and ride. Look at it. Even on a wild, windy September morning, it's just a delight. And that's what this is all about. Under £5,000 worth of sheer delight. The riding position is very good. The bars are at a nice height. Leaves your arms relaxed. The seat's got this amazing kind of bump on the back of it that just supports your sacrum. It gives you something to lean back against. It's remarkably comfortable. So if you're spending a long time in the saddle, riding around the place, it's a lovely place to be. The mirrors are big and round, the controls are where you want them, everything ticks boxes. The suspension has a lot of travel. And really, it deals with all of this overbanding, horribly surfaced roads very well. If anything, it's a little bit too stiff. It's almost almost not giving me enough compression. As if the bike's been set up perhaps for rider and luggage or two people and luggage. So there's not enough weight on it to really do its job. See that's that's quite stiff for an adventure bike suspension. Nonetheless it's working just fine and at this we're rattling along at the speed limit and um, what was the just the mirror which has decided to let itself go all together. Ah. Come on chaps, that's not going to show me anything. Yeah, well there you go. It's all kind of loosely put together. It feels up to a certain quality, but no more, as if it's just fulfilling the basics. All right, that can be tightened. But do you want your mirrors to be flapping around when you're out on your adventure? If you're on a proper adventure, you'll have a toolkit with you. I don't, because I'm just playing at it. There's enough to pull you along. But what I don't like, and I'll show you, is the brakes. And I'm not being cruel. Or maybe I am. We're not trying to be cruel because we got some heat into these things. So they're warm. Well, let's say here we are at 60 miles an hour and something jumps out in front of you and you go for a handful of brake. A handful of brake. A handful of brake. A handful of brake. Come on. Come on. That is me pulling that lever all the way back <laughs> and um, yeah it leaves it leaves a lot to be desired I'm gonna do that again just for fun but I need to build up speed it takes a bit of time to build up speed building building the adventure tires are decent the 21 inch front wheel should give you uh, a degree of um, tractability when it's off-road so the lock is 
is easy and the sharp lock to lock it's loose you've got wheels which will climb over obstacles Glen Tress oh there we go real world example I see them ahead sheep 60 miles an hour I'm going to start emergency braking for these sheep now 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 oh no no Fui. there we go so that's probably the thing that troubles me most the power is okay but we are on single track roads in the middle of nowhere which is where this bike comes to life if you want to bimble along at the speed limit and just see stuff it's perfect you've saved yourself a fortune but don't think for a minute that you're competing with the big boys as if you've found an I before E except after C as if this is 80 or 90 percent of what they can do last three days I've been on a trip to the Isle of Skye and I'm in but up to the Isle of Skye and uh, I was riding a 2005 1150 GS which I thought was some kind of a joke but you know it wasn't even in 2005 the European manufacturers at the top of the range had so much worked out that this bike is struggling to catch up with you can feel it battering along the top of the road here smooth it is not and what these older bikes teach you is that you do need a bit of power coming out of Fort William coming along the A and B roads you need to have enough go to overtake things if you don't your adventure in Scotland will largely be enjoyed behind a caravan or a motorhome because you'll never get past it and this does struggle on the way here I attempted to overtake a couple of things and it managed but it's heart in the mouth stuff you're really out in the oncoming traffic for longer than anybody would feel comfortable with and then if something stops in front of you forget it you may as well just try and go off-road round it because it's stopping distances are horrid so if we're saying that this bike is somewhat flawed as a road bike and that is exactly what I'm saying it's a compromise across the board we're not actually being rude Royal Enfield would wholeheartedly agree with us because they don't claim that this is in fact a road bike at all or an adventure bike they say this is a bike for no roads actually a budget adventure bike or a sheep in wolf's clothing and um, I think the answer I've come up with is there's no such thing as an adventure bike a motorcycle is a motorcycle is a motorcycle the adventure is what you do with it and in, in that respect a bicycle could be an adventure bike this is definitely something that will get you out and about at the speed limit for under five thousand pounds and it will take care of you it will warm your heart to some extent you'll feel like looking after it because it looks after you and in that respect it absolutely succeeds so although we're bimbling we have in fact come out into the middle of nowhere and anything that gets you out into this is definitely an adventure bike cool see there is a proper adventure biker with that electric motor he's got on his all-terrain motorcycle or bicycle he's probably got almost as much torque as this has <laughs> You know, a couple of times today I've nearly turned back thinking that's it I've done it I've explored what this bike's all about I've had enough it's time to go back and 
And that's because I'm accustomed to more. We all are. And that would sort of be missing the point. Yes, it's cheap. Ah. And yes, it's underpowered. And yes, the brakes are horrible. And yes, somebody has put a golf club in the middle of the hills. See, that's what adventures are all about. Finding the unexpected. Up here, in this glen, a man in Pringle sweaters knocking their balls around with sticks. And they seem to be having a very good time, even in this wind. So what I'm trying to get to, the long way around, because that tends to be what adventure biking's all around, is that this bike does endear itself to you. There's something endearing about it. The key is to not expect too much from it. If you don't go out expecting a lot, then you actually won't be disappointed. You can't be disappointed. I'm going to go for an overtake. So we come down two gears. We look to see if there's space, which there's not, but there is now. And I'm overtaking something! Yay! As I said, if you don't have expectations about just thundering past all traffic, and you're happy to work up to it, then you won't be disappointed. If you're expecting a build quality, I mean the instruments are fogging up already, it feels like I could do with an extra gear. A sixth would just give it the equivalent of an overdrive, which would extend its legs, but the, the gearing is crucial on this, there's so little power. It's down there in the lower rev range, just to get you in and out of trouble. I think I'm enjoying myself, which I didn't actually set out to do. Whee! Maybe this is what fun feels like. So there is a word for this bike. I've got a very good word for this bike that sums it up, and it's plucky not a word you hear very often. It's something that's small and underwhelming, because this is completely underwhelming compared to the majority of bikes you're riding around on at the moment. However, it gives more as an experience than you would expect from reading or listening or looking at it. You've got, to, oh, there's those Terrible, terrible brakes! Oh dear God, that's a wake-up call. Thanks, sheep. So that's one area I would maybe do something about. Can't be that hard to put another caliper on it. Change the pads, maybe. Different set of pads. The discs are 300. Should be okay. It's a two-pot caliper. Again, the G310 GS, everything else in this category is a two-pot caliper, but their brakes feel a hell of a lot more substantial than this. Plucky! That's where we were. Plucky like a terrier. Kind of holds on and gives you everything. And because it gives you everything, you can't get annoyed with it. maybe don't want to get too involved in big roads but then adventuring is not about taking the main roads anyway it's about getting off to see the places where people rarely go and that's where we are now places that people rarely go beautiful and that's it that's the essence of what this bike is about if you have the spirit of adventure in you 
and you can't afford anything else as a first bike, as a first big bike, just as something to go and play on. This will not disappoint you. It couldn't disappoint anybody. But you have to be very clear, you don't have to be, but it's useful to be very clear about its limitations. The Royal Enfield Himalayan. A budget-priced adventure bike that does the job and is plucky. That's probably about all we can say, because we're not getting past that anytime soon. I'll tell you what, let's have a go. Ah, oh, my heart's in my mouth, my heart's in my mouth, I'm running out of revs, my heart's in my mouth, I'm past. Plucky! Did I mention that? <laughs> This Royal Enfield has been much like the other one was, rather difficult to quantify. It's, um, it's had bits fallen off. I've lost the seat today. I've had the mirrors flapping around. Uh, it's underpowered. The brakes are horrible. There's just so much to dislike. And yet at the same time, there is something about it, some kind of character about it, which draws you in like a Tonka toy. It's, uh, it, it's very tricky, stupid little things. I like the choke. I'm old, maybe. I like having a choke. What I absolutely love is it has a compass. It has a motorcycle with a compass. It didn't spot till halfway through, but it's got its own compass. We are currently facing southeast, and I wouldn't have known that with any other bike. The quality is so-so, but you have to keep in mind always the price. The price of this is under £5,000. You'd probably do better with a 310 GS. You'd certainly do better with a KTM. But the fact that these exist in the world and give us that kind of choice is phenomenal. I'm not smitten, but I don't hate it either. If you like this, then please do like it and subscribe for more content like this. Hopefully next week, I will be riding something with a bit more vroom.